Now we are going to see how the instruction decoder could be constructed. Indeed, the instruction decoder is a combinational circuit which decodes and converts the instruction into the signals which are necessary to control all parts of the computer during the single cycle execution. The input to our instruction decoder is in the form of 16 bits instruction. So we have, uh, let me go back maybe and here show it to you over here we have the the instruction decoder and you can see that the input to the instruction decoder comes from the instruction memory in the form of 16 bits okay so that's what we receive as the input for the instruction decoder and as the output we need to generate all these control signals so d a d b a, D, A, B, A, 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 these three, we see that these are rather easy to generate. And then M, B in the form of a single bit, M, D, R, W, M, W, P, L, J, B, and B, C, all of these are single bit signals. But F, S, the function select, is in the form of four bits. So we need to see how these could be generated using our instruction decoder so we have the 16 bit of inputs uh, then the outputs that we have are the control signals the register file addresses the a a a and b as as i just mentioned then 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 we we need to have the function unit select or fs in the form of four bits and then the multiplexer select controls mb and md are also generated using the instruction decoder we also need to to receive the data memory write rw and mw so rw is in order to write into the register file and mw is in order to write into the memory and we also have the program counter controls pljb and bc these are also generated using the instruction decoder the register file outputs are rather easily determined da a, A, and B, A are directly received from D, R, S, A, and S, B fields of the instruction. So if you remember over here, we had the OP code and then we had three fields. Okay, for destination register, source A, and source B. These could be directly connected to the D, A, to the D, A, 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 and B, A inputs of our data pass. A, A, and B, A. Okay, so with, with them we are fine. But we need to determine the remaining signals. Okay, for as for the remaining signals, we need to determine the function select, F, S, and all the others, like memory write, register write, uh, and and also the signals that we need to have for the multiplexes. Well, the remaining control signals don't depend on the addresses, so they will be a function of the instruction register bits from nine to thirteen. We will see how. In order to find out the formulation and then construct the combinational circuit, we need to examine the relation between the outputs and the op codes operation codes that we have we need to go back to our operation codes and then check what we have we will observe that other than the branches and jumps that we have the function select could be obtained from bits number 9 10 11 and 12. so again keep in mind that we have four bits for the function select the other control signals then on the other hand will depend on depend as much as possible on the instruction register bits from 15 14 and 13 as we will see in the next slides uh, indeed in order to make some sense of what we just discussed we will divide the instruction into a given times as you can see here all the instructions that we have are divided into these given number of times 
The first types are the function unit operations using registers. The second one is regarding memory read, then memory write, and then function unit operation using registers and constants. So constant is the important thing here. And then the last three are regarding the branches and jumps. Uh, if we look back at our list of the functions, so we, we have some of them here and some of them here in two pages. Uh, let me just clean, clean whatever we had here and then I will show you how the, the operations, the instructions are classified. So here we still have, okay, so uh, let me do it in a better way. All right, so here you can see the load immediate and add immediate. These are the instructions which involve constant uh, inputs and for them, if you move back here for those function units operating using registers and constants you can see that for bits number 15 14 13 and 13 we have 1 0 0 okay i will now go back to that page again and we show you that 15 14 and 13 are 1 0 0 So 100, zero, zero, 100. Zero, zero. Okay, so that's what we have. The three most significant bits that we have for the OP code. And then the next class includes the memory operations, memory read and memory write. Memory read and memory write, you can see that for them we have 0, zero 01 and 0, 1, 0 for the three bits that mentioned. And you could see them again over here. So load and store are for reading from memory and writing into memory. So basically this is a memory write operation and this is a memory read operation. And for them you can see the bits here, yeah? 0, 0, 001 and 0, 010. 0. These are what we have for branches and the rest, including shift to right, shift to left, move B, the arithmetic operations and the logical operations, they are classified as as function unit operations using registers. So this is the class that we have for them. And for them, 15, 14, and 13 bits are always equal to zero. You can go back and double check and you will see that that is the case. And therefore, here we will have a kind of true table for our instruction decoder, which is obtained by referring to the table that we just had over there. And here we, you can see how the the control word bits are determined. So for MB, MD, RW, MW, PL, JB, and BC, they are determined based on the operation that we need to perform. For example, when we want to perform the addition or a subtraction, it is in this category of the operations. In that case, MB and MD will be equal to zero because we are not using a constant value and we are not reading or writing into the memory. So both of them will be equal to zero. Register write will be equal to one because the result of the operation will be written into the register file, into, the, into one of the registers. Memory write is equal to zero. We are not going to write into the memory. And then we, the PL is equal to zero as well because we the next value that we have for the program counter will be the current value plus one. Yeah? There's no jumping or branching. And in this case, the JB and BC will not be important as well. You can check it in 
in this way for the other operations as well for memory read for example in the case that we have memory read mb will be equal to 0 md will be equal to 1 in this case so basically this will tell us that we are taking the data coming from the memory not from the data pass register write is equal to 1 because we are going to write the data that we have read from the memory into one of the registers memory write is equal to 0 we are not going to write into the memory and the pl is equal to 0 you can also double check similarly for the next set of the operation categories indeed. so these types are based on the blocks controlled and the seven signals to be generated yeah these are the seven signals that we need to generate over here we have seven signals that we need to generate so the instructions are indeed divided into into categories we can also divide them into two groups the ones that include data pass and memory control which are the four, first four types and the last three are the ones that deal with the program content so these three deal with program content and these three don't deal with the program content but they deal with the data pass and memory control in the data pass and memory control blocks we have the for, for them we need to work on max b which which is uh, involved in the first and fourth type so max b is indeed involved in the first and the fourth type you can see it over here max b is here and here over here it should be it should be set to zero and here it should be set to one yeah once we have the memory read and memory write this will not be important in this max b but for the immediate input or for using constants we will make mb equal to one for the other regular arithmetic and logical operations mb will be set to zero and similarly for the memory and max d when we deal with the if you remember if we, here we have the memory and the function unit we have the multiplexer yes which receives inputs from these two and then we have the md here so which determines whether we get the data from the function unit or from the memory in those cases the max d will be max d will be involved and then by assigning codes with no or only one one for for them we will be able to implement mb md rw and mw in a simple way in the control unit more of a bit setting approach was used for bit 15 and 14 when they are equal to 1 they were assigned to generate pl for generating jb we directly use bit number 13 and uh, again for the function select we used bit number so indeed for function select we used directly bits number 12 to 9 but then in some cases we have a contradiction because bit number 9 was used as the bc so branch control for branch control bit number 9 is used but then this contradicts the case when fs is equal to 0 0 0 0 because we need for branches we need to have fs equal to 0 0 0 0 then in order to force fs bit number six to zero when we have branches and in those cases bit nine might not be zero in it then bit nine is into uh, fs6 function select bit number six is disabled by the pl and you can see it over here so pl is here pl signal is here you can see that when it is 1 then here we will have 0 and then 
bit number 9 will be equal to 0 or fs indeed fs bit number 9 comes from here mm, it is here so bit number 9 from the instruction is here then not pl is here when pl is equal to 1 we will have 1 here that 1 will appear as 0 here and then the output of the and bit will be equal to 0 and therefore fs Z, fs6 bit number 6 will be equal to 0 even if bit number 9 from the instruction is 1 whatever it, it is we will have 0 over here so keeping all of these in mind here you can see the the implementation of the instruction decoder let me show you or highlight you some parts of it so this is what we just discussed we don't need it again you can see that da aa and ba as we already discussed they directly are received from dr sa and sp that we have in our instruction register okay so we are fine with them they are easy to to deal with for mb for the bit number 10 of our control word it comes directly from bit number 15 for function select we need four bits those four bits come from bit number 12 11 10 and 9 for bit nine, bit nine, we we just discussed that we end bit nine, bit number nine with the uh, complement of what we have for PL, and then for for the other ones as well, you can see that MD, register write, memory write, JB and BC are uh, generated either directly by some signals that we have here. So for example, bit number. 9 is also used in order to determine the branch condition yeah? all of these are indeed obtained by careful investigation of what we have here for our instruction specifications in the yeah? we have the op code for each in for each instruction we have the op code by careful investigation of the op code and the the, the resulting in the control signals that we need the instruction decoder is designed and you can see the final result over here here you can see an example of instruction execution six number of instructions are provided here the operation code is given we have the immediate add or add immediate you can see the function here whatever we have in the uh, register with the address of source a is added to the constant value that we receive from the instruction register at the bit position 20 which is zero field and then the result is saved in the register with the address that we have in the destination register and for that referring to the instruction decoder that is available here the control bits are generated as you can see here similarly for the other instructions for ld instruction we have the operation code given here so this is the op code in it the content of the memory at this address is copied or loaded into this register and you can see the generated control signals referring to the instruction decoder that we have here so you can i think you can go through through the others on your own and check to see whether it corresponds to what you expect or not later we will go through through some examples for immediate addition for loading and branching on zero in more details